Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we are continuing looking at embedded systems design using the MSP430 FR2355. In this video, we're going to start looking at data movement instructions, and specifically, we're going to look at addressing modes, the first of seven supported within the MSP430, which is called register mode addressing. Okay, so remember, data movement instructions refer to moving information from memory into a CPU register, from a CPU register into memory, between CPU registers, or even between locations in memory. The, the biggest instruction that they have, the key instruction that is in the MSP430 instruction set is called the move instruction. And this is, you're probably gonna use this instruction more than any other instruction. I would, I would uh, venture a guess that this is the most commonly used instruction in all, all of the programs used on an MSP430. And its mnemonic is simply MOB, and what it does is it just moves information from the source to the destination. And it's very simple, right? If you do dot .w after it, it's a 16-bit move, and that means it'll move 16 bits from the source to 16 bits in the destination. If you do dot .b, it means it'll do a bitewise movement, and that means it'll, do, it'll take the eight, the least significant eight bits of the source, and put it into the least significant eight bits of the destination. <clears throat> so it's actually relatively simple in terms of the concept of operation. So here is where it gets a little bit interesting. <clears throat> you can specify the source and the destination in a variety of different ways. And the way that you provide that information is called the addressing mode. <clears throat> okay. So now this is where when you program an assembly, you're going to get to know addressing modes and you're going to try to understand like which ones are used for which application. And it's, and they're going to get more and more complex as we walk through the, the seven different types of addressing mode. In this video, we're going to look at the first one, which is called register mode addressing. <clears throat> What's neat about addressing modes is in assembly, you are controlling exactly how they work. When you get to a higher level language such as C, it's all abstracted. And so you don't necessarily care how the CPU is providing the, you know, the addressing modes for source and destination. It just works. But we wanna learn about it so that we can be better uh, higher level programmers. Okay, so register addressing mode is very, very simple. You basically use an identifier <clears throat> for the source and the destination, and you move information between registers. All the registers in the MSP430 have names. So you can use R0, R1, R up to R15, but you can also use the dedicated names such as program counter, stack pointer, and status register. Okay, so SP, PC, uh, those, those names right there. Okay, so let's code it up. All right, so let's do an example where we're gonna move some information around between registers, and then we'll watch it in the debugger and see how it works. And we'll do some dot W's and some dot B's just to see how it works. Now, what is in the registers to begin with? Well, when you reset the CPU, R4 to R15 are going to be cleared because they're, you know, remember registers are just D flip flops with uh, synchronous enables. And so when you reset it, they won't have anything in them. <clears throat> so in order to have an example that's interesting, what we'll do is we'll start by grabbing information inside of out of the program counter, which is going to have the address and the next location in memory. And so it'll actually have a value. And then what we can do is we can move it into R4 and then move it into R5 and move it around. Stack pointer is also going to have an information in it. Uh, it more than likely will be about 3000. We don't need to know why that is, but we want to move that around too. And let's do some dot W's and some dot B's. Uh, <clears throat> just to see how they work. So let's fire up Code Composer and let's start a new project. So here I have my Code Composer and what I'm gonna do, you can see my ASM Blinky from last time or from a few videos ago. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do a file, new CCS project. And then the little splash screen comes up and the, big, the key on this is gonna be check to make sure it's MSP430 FR2355. That's the MCU on our on our launchpad board. And we're gonna come down here and give it a project name. So as always, I do ASM underscore, and I wanna kinda of try to keep these somewhat uh, logical. So I'm gonna do ADDR mode one, and then I'll call it register. So that means we're gonna go through seven different addressing modes. Uh, this, this one will just be looking at address or register mode. And then remember down here, we're doing assembly only 
So it's empty assembly only project. The file that it creates is not empty. Okay, it's gonna have code in it that is gonna be the skeleton and it's gonna set up some stuff for us automatically, but it means it's empty in that we produce the main loop. Okay, so we're off and running here. So let's go in here and we're gonna start by doing this. I'm gonna put a, an address label right here called main. And then down here, I'm gonna use an instruction which we haven't covered yet, but it's called jump main. And it's, it's kind of self-explanatory if you think about it. This is an address label. And once I get down to here, this jump is gonna put, it's gonna basically set the program counter back to point to this location of memory. So this will form a, an infinite loop for us so that our program just doesn't run off and, and just crash. So we can put instructions in inside of this main loop. And then what we can do is just watch it loop through it. Now we're not gonna loop it. Well, we are gonna loop it. We're not gonna let it free run, we'll step it, okay? So let's start off with an instruction that's move.w and let's just move the value of the program counter into R4. And to be a, a good coder or good coding process, I will put a comment, copy PC into R4. <laughs> Pretty simple comment. Uh, then let's move, I don't know, let's move R4 into R5. Copy PC, oh no, no, no. R4 into R5, and then let's move R5 into R6. Okay, so then we'll go copy R5 into R6. And that's good enough for now. So let's go ahead and save that, and let's go ahead and fire up a debug session. And nothing's gonna happen on the board. That, well, like, we're not flashing LEDs. We just wanna look at what's going on in the registers, okay? And this is very simple. So first and foremost, here's where you're gonna see the registers up here, core registers. And what I wanna do is I wanna go down here and set a breakpoint. So go ahead and double click in front of move.w. And then I'm gonna run this. So I'm gonna resume and it'll run down to the breakpoint and stop. This point in the program is actually address <clears throat> about 8,000 and A. Okay, so we're about, the program counter is at 8,000 and A. We are going to take the program value. Remember, 8,000 is where program memory starts in this MCU. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy it into R4, uh, and then we'll see if it works. So to do that, I'm going to step. So here it goes. I'm going to execute this first instruction. Look at what happened. <clears throat> 8,000C was copied into R4. And then now 8,000C, we're going to copy it into 5 and copy it into 6. Okay? Moves don't destroy the destination. They just copy it. So then I'm going to move it into there, into R5, move it into there, R6. Okay, so you see how that worked? I just moved it. This is actually a very simple addressing mode. Notice that the program counter marched along, though, as we did that. So let me let me keep running it. Now I'm going to go back to 8000A with the program counter, and I'll copy that. 8000C is where we're at, E. Okay. Notice that by the, when we copy out of the program counter the first time, it it's always at 8000C. Okay, so we did it. <laughs> not, not terribly interesting. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and stop that and we'll enter some more code. Uh, this time let's do this. Let's do let's look at a move at an as an eight bitter. So let's just grab the lower eight bits of the program counter and put them into our seven. Okay, so now we're gonna do copy least significant byte of PC into our seven. And then we'll do a move.b from r7 into r8. <clears throat> That'll just copy the least significant bit. And I can come over here and go copy lb of r7 into r8. And I could do a massive copy and paste, but I want, kinda wanna, you kinda wanna do this slow so you follow along. Uh, the whole point of this is you should be typing along with me if you wanna learn this because that's the best way to learn it is to just write a whole bunch of simple programs and they just keep building up and building up. Okay. All right, now what happens? So let's see what we went. Our PC into R7, R7 into R8, R8 into R9. I got my comments already. Okay, I saved it. Let's go ahead and compile that. Or assemble it, I guess, would be more technical. I got my registers up here uh, and let's go down here. Nice, one nice thing is that uh, the breakpoint is still there, even if I don't want it. So let's go down here and run to the breakpoint. And now <clears throat> we're ready to look at R7. Notice that R7 doesn't have anything in it. And notice that program counter has 8,010. So then what's gonna happen is 
it will, as I step this, program counter was incremented to 8,012. So that was the value that got copied into R7. But notice that only the least significant byte got copied. So it didn't bring over the 80. And so then if I do that two more times, notice that <laughs> it only it only copied the least significant byte. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, let's do let's do one more of those just because this is so simple. But let's go ahead and let's look. Let's bring in the stack pointer just because that has another value that has something initialized in it. And again, we don't need to know what it means. We just need to know that there's a value in there. So let's bring the stack pointer into R10. And this is this will be cool because we're gonna like basically use every register in the CPU, all 16 of them except for the status register in R3. So we'll go copy SP into R10, and then we'll do move.w R10 into R11, and then we'll do copy, copy R10 into R11, and then we'll go move.w R11 into R12. <clears throat> and at this point, it's like getting, I think you got the point here. <laughs> <laughs> Why not continue it? So let's do it, and then we'll just go for the, the byte level one too. So we'll just take the SP, which is, I think it's gonna be zero anyway, but we'll see, I guess, right? So we'll go copy SP into R13. <clears throat> and these comments are kind of silly too, but it's good to put them in there because it just slows you down a little bit, makes you think about what you're actually trying to do. So somebody else could come in here and read your comment and be like, man, you're trying to copy R13. 13 and R14, but you typed in the wrong instruction. So, all right, let me fix that for you. Okay, so copy R14 into R15. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so I saved that up. Go ahead and run our last little debug session for this example. And it's loaded onto the board. Notice that the board has to be plugged in also. I mean, you probably got that by now. Let me remove that breakpoint. I'm going to move it down here and we're going to bring in the stack pointer. Okay, so let's run to the breakpoint. So we're getting time, we're getting stick time understanding this. Now this one is actually kind of I don't know why I say dumb, but the stack pointer has 3000 in it. And you're like, where did that come from? It turns out that's just the the address after the last location in data memory. So the stack works upwards through data memory. Again, we haven't covered that, so don't worry about it. But we just know that 3000 is in there. So now if I look at this, I'm going to copy that into R10. So let's walk, let's step it. R10 then becomes 3000. And then R11 becomes 3000. R12 becomes 3000. Oh, and then guess what? When I copy it again, I only grab the least significant byte. And so that was then 00. zero and then that got 00, zero got copied into R14. And that got copied in R15. Okay, piece of cake. So that's register mode addressing. So I save that. I'm going to close that. And now I have two projects in here. And that is really all this is about. So now let's go through this. And here's the other key for all the addressing modes. We're going to go through each one of these in different videos. The key is, can it be used in both the source and the destination? Can this register mode? And the answer is absolutely. It can be used in both register modes. Okay, so that is it. That's the register mode addressing and the move instruction. And remember, subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all the latest videos.